Welcome to COB Morality Team. As some of you know, I got monetized in early January, and by the time you see this, I should be up to about $100. So I figured it'd be fun to go, while the snow is melting here, the weather is nice, and go cold start all the fleet and show you kind of what's going on around here. If you're new here, this is my 1973 Saab Sonnet 3. It has a V4 engine from Ford and a four speed transaxle. It's front wheel drive. It's my rally car, my TSD rally car. Let's go take this for, uh, well, start it up. I actually drove this to work today, so it should start up like nothing. Let's turn the battery on. You can see it's on. I've got my GPS unit up here for TSD rallying. That's fun. I got this old German key. Um, ignition is on and yeah it works pretty well I actually just got done replacing the clutch on this thing it took about a week um, including working one of the things I want to do with this thing in the, in the near term is I was going to, to fix this fiberglass crack here. That is something that's been bugging me. It seems to have been in some kind of collision. It's got some, some issues here, but I don't think I'm going to get to that in the near term. So I think uh, to get rid of this ugly purple paint, instead I, I should probably just um, paint it up the way it is, leave the crack, and worry about that later. That way at least the car will be one, uh, one solid color. Otherwise, the rest of it, um, it's in pretty decent uh, condition right now. There are no major issues that I want to take care of. It's got a little bit of an exhaust leak, but I can drive with that. Let's go on to the next one. This is my 63 Corvair. I bought this Corvair to be a daily driver, even though I ride a bike. And uh, sometimes I need a car year round. So I wanted to get this thing, uh, fix it up a little bit. Currently, the engine is out of the car. So I can't start that up for you, unfortunately, but I can give you a little peek inside. Got yeah, a nice big steering wheel here and a horn ring. That'd be fun. No tachometer, but uh, all the cool stuff. Little four speed in there. It's got a, a posi rear end and very cool blue interior. This is the stuff I have not cleaned yet and that's um, that's what I've cleaned. So I'm very excited for this thing. I think it's gonna be a really cool car to drive around and uh, pretty good at the TSD rallies as well. All right, here we go. You'll see a video on this engine very soon. I'm getting this thing put together um, in the near term here. Let's go on. We got some cars in the barn over here. We'll take a look at those. This is my 2001 Honda Insight. We'll get this thing out in the light for you. When I started this channel, I had three cars. F100, the Insight, and the Sonnet. This was supposed to be my kind of daily car. It is really fun to drive. It's got a inline three cylinder. It's got a hybrid motor where the fly, flywheel would be and a five speed manual transmission. So actually for a hybrid and a fuel economy car, it's really fun to drive. Unfortunately, it is a 22 year old hybrid. <laughs> so I've gotten myself um, accidentally into a Rear end restoration on the whole, I took the whole axle out. I, um, I now have the hybrid battery out because the hybrid battery quit right when the axle went back in. So unfortunately, I can't start this thing up. If you wanna see more videos about the Insight, about getting it back on the road, let me know. It's been performing pretty badly as far as the videos go. So I haven't been featuring as much as I would otherwise. Um, but yeah, we're gonna to try to put the hybrid battery back in after rebuilding it and see if we can get this thing back on the road for a little while and hopefully sell it so I can get that Corvair on the road. This is Boo Radley, my 1965 Ford F100. It's got a 352 V8 and a three on the tree, three speed manual. Now, I haven't started this since December, so I'm gonna pop it in neutral and push it out into the light. I can't quite get this thing to roll out of the barn and I don't wanna roll back at the inside so let's take a look at it for now right as it is and we will get it started sitting here the battery has been turned off we got rodent repellent in here and we got 
oil. And I do have a starting procedure for my old cars that I've been using, and I've read on a channel called it's Ian's Classic Cars or something. It's Ian Terrell. He's got a a place in the UK where he does uh, old car stuff, and he says the biggest uh, cause of main bearing wear is that your engine starts up and there's no oil pressure for the first few seconds. So if you can sit there and crank it and get the oil pressure built up before it actually fires, you'll actually uh, reduce the wear because the RPM that the engine is spinning is lower when you're cranking it than it is when it's started. So we're going to go here and crank it a little bit. I'm going to push the clutch in just because <laughs> I'm nervous. Push the clutch in here and let's give it a crank for a little bit. You know, if I had an electric oil pump or something, or if I pulled a distributor out, I would just drive that oil pump by itself, but this is the best option for this. I'm gonna pop this choke out just a little bit. No fuel yet? Huh. Usually she starts pretty easy. Do we have fuel? We have fuel. This truck's usually pretty easy, pretty good to start. I'm gonna pop this choke out a little bit, just, just a hair, and we'll try this again. There we go. Beautiful. Nice FE block, 352. She's purring, so let's get out of here. Not hit the car. You see where we're going? <laughs> it's kind of kind of hard to see. Still cold. It's got three on the tree, so when you go close to the steering wheel, that's uh, up is reverse, down is first. And then when you go away from the steering wheel, it's second and third. It's a, it's a standard age pattern, but it's just uh, first out to second and third, and then reverses in and up. So, pretty sweet. I'm gonna let her sit here for a second, and we'll chat about it. Anyone who's known me for any length of time knows that this truck is me and I am this truck. I've had this thing since I was like 16 years old. My uh, uncle bought it for my grandfather and unfortunately both of them are no longer with us. So this is kind of the, the last piece that I have that connects me to them. Unfortunately, I don't drive it that much right now because even though I got the uh, clutch done, I need to do the radius arm bushings. So I figured I'd take the um, I-beams out and it's got the twin I-beam suspension, the swing arms up front. So. I figured I'd take all that out and redo it all, pour 15 um, and uh, powder coat everything. So you'll see this in the future doing uh, front suspension work, but for now it doesn't get that many miles. I probably do for a wax though. Let's move on. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for some more videos about the F600 mouse and we're going to go give it to you. This is a 1962 Ford F600. It used to be a um, oil delivery truck, fuel oil delivery. Got the battery down here. Got a new pack of battery on there that's been uh, disconnected for the winter. So hopefully that's got some juice in her yet. It's a weird noise. Well, let's see if we're neutral. Got a giant uh, four speed there. What is 
that noise? Well, let's see if she'll crank. Giant 262 in line six. Give her a little chunk here. She's kind of finicky sometimes. Got a single barrel ho single barrel holly in there. Gotta get the choke just right. There we go. Very nice. <laughs> I'm uh, pleasantly surprised at that. Look at this shifter throw. It is just gigantic. This is where they get the term rides like a truck or drives like a truck because it is pretty nasty. So let's see if this thing will move at all. Jeez. Okay, we broke out of something there. I don't want to break anything. Let's see if she'll do anything in reverse. I think we're gonna have to get the tractor out for this one. <laughs> I got some more digging to do. I guess we're doing one more cold start right now. This is my dad's 1988, I believe. John Deere 955. It's a nice uh, little inline three, uh, was it Yanmar diesel? Little Japanese thing. So give this thing a little bit of a glow plug action. Uses the same battery as the Insight and the Corvair, which is funny. All right, there we go. Well, yeah, at least to give a little... To get started? To get some assistance, because it's in a kind of a divot with the rear wheels, and I need to get it up and over the... Crap. Yeah, it's right here. Woo! It's working. Go for it. We're really close to the building here. is just so dumb I love it it's big it's slow it, it's bad at maneuverability but man it is fun to drive I'm hoping I can take this out to work one of these days maybe maybe tomorrow maybe later in the week but let's get this on the road Get for third gear Feels like third gear. <laughs> Sweet, we're moving, baby. We 
got it. <laughs> The other cars have issues, but <laughs> Mel takes the cake for that. There are no rear brakes. I have it capped off, but it stops fine and, and forward. It's just uh, manual brakes and rear. The whole cab needs to be replaced. It is rusted out. I wish I could save it. It is just gone. There are no cab mounts in the front. Like literally, the place they would mount is even gone. So it would take more money, probably five times more money, to repair the cab than it would to just get a different cab. <laughs> So we're gonna try to get a different 61 to 63 cab for that. The point of having this truck is to make it into a car hauler so I can take my uh, race car or whatever out to the races <laughs> or to move cars around or to go pick up a project or whatever it is. So um, I also need to extend this chassis and my dad and I were hopefully planning on extending the chassis this summer, but we're going to end up putting a couple feet of extra metal in that in that frame there, extending it out, uh, getting a, a longer drive shaft there, and then we can install the rear brakes and do all that stuff after the new um, drive shaft and brake line have been made. So, otherwise, I can drive it. I did drive it to work last fall after I got the oil pressure thing figured out. Except the light is still on, so I'll have to figure out what's wrong with the light. But yeah, that's a really long-winded way of saying that this is a pretty cool truck, and I want to put some more some more uh, time and en energy and effort and money into it. There's a lot of seal beam headlights here and we are the seal beam rally team. So thank you for joining me today. Keep an eye out for videos on all these cars. <laughs> this is what I've got going on in my life. This is my life. I go home from work and I work on these cars and I work on these videos. So thank you for joining me again. If you love this, please hit like. I know there's no love button, but if you didn't like this, get out of here. What are you even doing here? If you're watching this, give me a like. Thank you. Press on. The clutch is so different on these cars that after driving the F600 and then moving the F100 and then trying to uh, move the Saab, <laughs> I almost drove into the garage with the Saab because the clutch throw is like this and on, on the F600 it's like the whole thing. <laughs> so it, it's awesome to have such a variety of vehicles. Thanks for joining me today.